I was going to open this video with some French music, but my agent said no. So instead, here is a day in the life of the LaBelle. They had the same plan. Dead. Tag. Dead. I contributed. One more. Right here. Tag. He's cooking something. Pick me. Dead. Got him. Well, that was a good clip. <laughs> <laughs> we got a clip, baby! If that was a lesser gun, that would have been so much cooler. The LaBelle has a high muzzle velocity, great damage at range, and it's pretty easy to pick up. And whether you love it or hate it, it's hard to argue with the results. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, let's do the whole stats thing. The LaBelle is a 3 slot long ammo rifle that costs $397. It has an effective range of 310 meters, does 132 damage to the chest within about 40 meters, and has the fastest muzzle velocity in the game. It is what we in the industry call meta. God, not that. No one wants that. What are you doing, Mark? The LaBelle has four variants. The base LaBelle, the Aperture, the Talon, and the Marksman. The Aperture is the same gun, but it has an Aperture Sight. It can be used as a best of both worlds sight option because you can toggle the sight using the alternate fire button, X, by default on PC. In my experience, the Aperture Sight is too jarring in close range and obscures too much of your vision at a distance, so you'll probably end up spotting from your shoulder, then using the Aperture for precision. The LaBelle Talon has a metal blade fastened in the stock that does 330 damage on a heavy attack. It honestly might be one of the best variants of any weapon in the game. On top of being one of the strongest guns at all ranges, because, I mean, it's the LaBelle, it can break down doors in two hits, clear bees in one swing, kill armored AI, and cause spontaneous heart attacks in the allies of its victims. <laughs> the hell? Do you see? Um, I, I didn't bring chokes. An arrow? Again, anything? What the hell was that? A silent shot? I'm scared. I don't know where to run. What was that? <laughs> I don't know. He had a heart attack. <laughs> Got too excited. <laughs> And finally, the LaBelle Marksman is probably one of the most universally hated weapons in the game, not because it's bad, but because it's quite good. And trust me, we'll come back to that. The LaBelle has two custom ammo options, Incendiary and Spitzer. Incendiary basically ruins all the good qualities of long ammo and gives you almost nothing in return. Short of a barrel uprising, which I'm not ruling out, I see you. I would probably pass on the incendiary ammo. Spitzer ammo is the premium option set at an uncomfortable $220. For that extra money you get complained about in the official discord, increase the bullet velocity from 630 meters per second up to 850, increase your penetration, but lose out a bit of damage going from 132 down to 113. Did I mention you can pay to have people complain about you? Spitzer is probably best paired with the Marksman variant where the extra effective range and velocity can actually come in handy, and again, we'll come back to that. The LaBelle can benefit from four traits. Bullet Grubber allows you to catch unspent bullets on partial reloads. This can be useful given how lengthy the reload is and how few bullets you get. Of course, you can also do a partial reload by hitting the reload button before you cycle the bolt, putting in the next bullet. Iron Sharpshooter allows you to remain in the iron sight when cycling the next bullet. This makes tracking targets easier and allows you to shoot slightly faster, but it does not apply to the Marksman variant. Steady Aim slowly reduces weapon sway when aimed through the scope of a rifle. This works both for the Marksman and Aperture Sight, and it can be handy to have, 
but not always necessary. Marksman Scope Smith allows you to remain aimed down the scope on the Lebel Marksman when you cycle the next bullet between shots. And with that, we have all the pieces. The Lebel Marksman, Spitzer Ammo, Marksman Scope Smith in an elevated position nowhere near the bounty. Seriously, what's up with that? Combined to form the forbidden playstyle. Let's have a look. That was clean. Did I just survive a headshot? I think so. Where? Oh, he didn't. If you play this way, seek help. So you're probably picking up that the Labelle has a lot of good qualities going for it. The Labelle has a 10 round magazine, uses long ammo, has the highest muzzle velocity, and a competitive damage stat. With its variance and spitzer option, the Labelle is just a really well-rounded gun that is usable in most situations. Moral of the story, if you are using the Labelle right, you'll be dropping guys more than Coach Pep in a locker room speech. But until now guys, I am the boss, and I decide. Don't make my faces guys, now in the future. Because I told him the first day, I'm not perfect guys, I make a mistake. But you probably already knew those things, so for a smaller, lesser known fact, the Labelle was the first military rifle to use smokeless powder. Which, I mean, coming from France, you know, is pretty ironic. I didn't even know you could be French and not smoking. But this fact does have some practical application in the game. Comparing the smoke bloom from the Labelle to something like the Sparks, there is some visual advantage and the thinner cloud might help you stay on target. It's not a huge thing or exclusive to the Labelle, but if anything, it makes me appreciate the little details Crytek puts into the game. However, as we have mentioned, it's not all roses and sunshine or the Labelle. The ammo capacity is definitely a hindrance, though not as detrimental as something like the Nitro. With 10 in the magazine and 5 in reserve, you've got 15 bullets to last you until you find ammo, and partial reloads usually mean you'll lose a bullet. So, given the requirement for ammo management and the fact that it costs $397, it might not be the best weapon for new players. Also, you'll need to control the pace of a battle because the reload from empty is super long. Normally, this is where I would ask you to subscribe to the channel or if I wanted to do the whole French thing and say Saboner and you would laugh and I would laugh, but I'm worried that's a little played out. So instead, wellness check. How are you doing? The reload is done, but feel free to tell me below. So with lots of cons, what should you bring to plan around them? The Labelle has a large magazine, but it doesn't have a lot of ammo. If you think you'll get into some sustained fights or don't have bullet grubber, you can take the Sparks pistol to boost your total ammo to 29 or the faster uppercut to take you to 24. Also, the resupply rate kind of sucks, capped at two from boxes, but those pistols can improve that. However, the Labelle is pretty effective on its own, which means you don't necessarily need a secondary to cover its weaknesses in a firefight. A sidearm like the Spitfire can help you remain competitive in close range or during a lengthy reload, and the hand crossbow offers a lot of utility, especially for flanking around with a little stealth. Whichever path you choose, the ammo economy is definitely a consideration for the Labelle, so you might keep an eye out for long ammo weapons to loot, or plan to visit a resupply cart after a quick skirmish. But I think you're getting the point. The Labelle has good damage, good range, and pretty equitable price to performance, assuming you don't die before you get to use it. I guess the main competitor of the Labelle is either the Bertier or the Mosin, and if you don't like how clunky the Labelle is or how slow the reload is, then you will probably gravitate toward the Mosin. I don't really think the Labelle is overpowered, but it is certainly meta, but as Mark has shown us, even meta has room to let us down. Hear it? Oh, on the right. Yep. 
I see him. He doesn't see me. Oh, you bastard! <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I've been doing that. I'm glad he's. I'm just glad he's dead. Yeah.